Sagittarius Sun Moon Rising May 2024. Sagittarius, the month starts with Mars becoming visible in your fifth house. This is a rare event and it's not going to happen maybe for 30 years again because Mars was invisible, uh, especially in your fifth house. It's not going to happen for 30 years. But every two years, Mars becomes invisible for about six months because it's too close to the sun. We can't see it. But from the beginning of May, it starts coming out of the rays of the sun and a little bit before sunset, we'll be able to see it. So the ancient Babylonians gave a great meaning to Mars being born again. This is the planet that stays invisible the longest of all. So where is it being born for you? In the fifth house. It shows that in the next two years, not just in May, they can be, in May it's going to be born. This may be a new creative project because it's in your fifth house. Or maybe a new child. Fifth house is about children, conception, some, a new idea. Fifth house is anything we create ourselves, whether it's we download a new idea, our own original intelligence downloads it, whether we create a project or a child, anything that we create is the fifth house. So there is this new renewed desire to create something for you that comes, maybe a brilliant idea, you download Sagittarius, maybe a drive to have a child, maybe a drive to uh, renew your relationships with your children to become more proactive and more involved in their life. Maybe your child, if you have a child, firstborn in particular, but child anyway, children can start a new phase in their life where they can be more proactive, active. They start a new project or something. Of course, Mars always shows the possibility of some kind of a power struggle there because it is Mars, <laughs> because someone is like the birth of more independence. Mars in Aries is extremely independent, wants to do what it wants. So maybe this is a phase of the life of your child or maybe it's the phase of your own creativity that wants to know no boundaries, that becomes more innovative, which is very martial energy, breaks the molds. Mars breaks the old patterns. So your creative project, your ideas that you can start on and be working for the next two years almost. Or it can be the birth of a new romantic interest. <laughs> if it's fifth house to fall in love, to fire up passions. And it might be with someone more youthful or this energetic, energetic Mars-like quality. And of course, if you're already in a relationship, hopefully that can be the renewal of uh, the spark, the romantic spark between you. That's another way it can play out. And of course, it can be the birth of a new argument <laughs> or competition or power struggle with a romantic partner, with a child. Uh, or maybe you want to be more independent romantically. Uh, and that can create certain, you know, martial events. Mm, but as I said, for your creative projects is fantastic. Or fifth house is also how you have fun. Sports, not, not sports when you work out so your back doesn't hurt. It's sports like you, you just enjoy them. You can find truly new sources of sports and something more physical and more involved and more active that give you joy. Mm, I started jumping on the trampoline if you've never tried it guys try it it's the best very enjoyable workout and gives twice as better results than just running doesn't strain your joints but just throwing this out there but you can discover a new passion it's not necessarily just falling in love or rediscovering romantic sight with your partner uh starting chasing dates with mars there definitely if you are more not someone who goes after dates you might become more proactive in that direction or your dates might start chasing you more definitely there is more action there dynamics in your romantic life if you want to be polygamous and sleep around yeah, that can be a theme for a year and a half definitely i mean <laughs> casanova had the jupiter mars and venus in his fifth house but mars being born in your fifth house can also increase this flirtatiousness or Mars in the fifth house can give birth to a new project where you can be center stage or you get a new idea to create something um, fifth house can make you Mars being born there be a bit more speculative throw yourself into speculative risky investments or risky undertakings and Mars is with Rahu which is even more risk take here <laughs> than 
Mars. Is that going to play out well for you? I think it might. Mars is in its own sign. If you take some risk, you know, of course, I would advise you to be a bit more cautious, but I don't see why not. I think Mars almost asks you to take more risk, uh, do things you haven't done before, do new hobbies, try new things that you haven't done before, new hobbies, leisure times, vacations or whatever, go to more fun extreme places even if you want holidays is the fifth house can be the birth of something like that all right enough about this fifth house mars reborn the new moon in taurus activates exactly the conjunction of jupiter and uranus which happened on the 20th of april and many people said nothing happened for me maybe they had some insight or some download but this jupiter uranus conjunction was very important for you sagittarius because you are jupiter and Jupiter joins Uranus just once every 14 years. But you're going to start seeing where your new source of wealth and abundance and inspiration is from after the new moon in Taurus on the 8th of May. Because we need an activation of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction point. And that's when it happens. Every time there is an activation over the next 14 years, this theme is going to unfold further for you. So what can it be? There can be a sudden opportunities coming to you, a renewal of your work, a renewal of your work environment, new job or new job projects that appears for you or some project that is about helping those in need uh, or some activity that, and it's not just going to be one off there on the 8th of May, it's the whole May first of all, but secondly, as I said, it unlocks a 14 year cycle for you that you're just starting to tiptoe into with this new moon activation. Uh, something about developing strong excitement and knowledge and understanding uh, or even source of income through health, through anything to do with health, with exercise, with um, health routines, or even the sudden solving of some health issue and situation that this new moon can activate for you. Uh, or anything to do with, you know, nutrition, food, uh, exercise, which is health-based now, it can be a source of growth for you. Or a new job, again, that can become meaningful, inspirational, and so on. Um, and Jupiter and Venus will meet. First, Jupiter and the Sun will meet in your sixth house. So if you want to start any new workout routine, and you want it to stick after the new moon on the 8th and especially around the sun jupiter conjunction because you're gonna do it with joy if you want to start a new work project or you want to hire new people to work for you uh, or specialists of any sorts which is again the sixth house help of some sort that you hire or that you uh, or you apply for a job somewhere this is such a lucky month for that jupiter and uranus the two benefics to, to, to starting a new cycle in your sixth house venus conjunct jupiter go for an interview for a new job then interview people you want to uh hire there will be good quality in this week after the new moon from the 8th of may till the 25th of may all only positive events there uh, if you want to do some good developments in your health start it then or if you want to start on a healing journey with a new medicine with a new routine a new doctor, a new diagnosis, do it, do it then. You'll find exactly the right good doctors, the good prescription, or the good state of mind that they'll teach you about how to fix a health problem or become healthier um, there. Um, and even there can be some important meeting that has positive e effect on your... Uh, Venus Jupiter around the 23rd, understanding about your uh, service, understanding ab about your work that is good for your work, for the future of your work as well. Um, even socially, it's very good because you're Jupiter and Venus is a social planet. When Venus comes to you on the around the 23rd, you might feel more inspired uh, to enjoy the five senses. Actually, there is a new moon on the 23rd, as a full moon, sorry, in your sign. 23rd of May, full moon, when on the exact same day, 
the planet that rules the full moon and you is conjunct Venus. So this full moon is very auspicious for you. Somehow you're in the center of attention. The spotlight is on you. This full moon in your sign. There can be some fulfillment of yourself, completion of something important that you've started, recognition of something you've seen, seeing the results of something you've seen. Might be connected to your work, Venus, Jupiter, in your sixth house. Might be illumination on some problem you've been having or situation, kind of new solutions there or a new direction in something that already is existing in your life. Uh, kind of like the gears start moving. I really like this new moon, even though it has a bit of a bohemian <laughs> energy to it because it's trying Neptune, it's opposite Venus and Jupiter, the very beginning there. Uh, and it's a party time, it's celebration time, it's in Sagittarius, the sign of celebration. It's in, it has a lot of idealism, but also a bit of Epicurean energy to it, Jupiter, Venus. Uh, so celebrations, enjoyments, entertainments of any sorts or um, something important that comes but benevolent. Uh, it's specifically on you that you'll see because on the same day Jupiter and Uranus are conjunct. All right, and the last but not least is that those six, six house themes will stay with you even though Jupiter leaves the sixth house at 25th of May, but it started three new cycles. It will stay at least for a year very strongly with you, something to do with health, with all of those things that we talk, work, projects, and so on. We usually more work than normal in Jupiter in the sixth house or some new one or whatever. And if you want to renew your job, you have one year of open window. Plus, Jupiter Uranus is 14 years, so some new job that you're starting now or over the next one year can be a source of gains. Some new employment that you start can be a source of gains and abundance for you for many years ahead, 14 years minimum. Or a new health routine that you start now can be a source of well-being and wisdom and even wealth for you for 14 years. But Jupiter from 25th of May starts moving into your 7th house. So simultaneously with the 6th house themes that stay with you for a year as opportunities, a new theme opens, which is from the 7th house. It directly will look at you. Jupiter starts protecting you from the 8th of month, May, your health, your body. And Jupiter rules you going into the 7th house. That's kind of relationships. You are going to become very relationship focused. I remember I have three best friends who are Sagittarius rising. One of them, last time Jupiter transited her seventh house, she got married. She's watching this, even though she stopped watching astrology. I'm telling her that over the next one year, I think she <laughs> might have similar experience. Look back 2012, 2013, what was happening when Jupiter was in your 12th house. Of course, it's not going to be the same because now the rest of the planets are in different places. But there is a new renewal that Jupiter starts in your relationships. Uh, or, for example, my husband just had last year Jupiter in his seventh house. He just started a new relationship because he was happy already in ours. Jupiter in the seventh house will free you because it's a freeing planet from relationships that are unhappy or stagnant in a very easy way, like friends or just like, you know. But if you're in a good relationship, it can improve the health of your partner, the opportunities of your partner, or it can bring you new business contracts. Uh, for me, it was Jupiter in the seventh house. Uh, it's an amazing business partnership. I found some of the best business astrologers that to collaborate with. Uh, it can be good for growing your business. You, you see the sixth house here when Jupiter is, it's very work oriented, yes. Because, like, you decide what you, you do the work, the hard work, but uh, the, the, you know, this is the expertise that you have, the sixth house, or maybe starting here something with those themes, but you need the clients, and the seventh house is the clients. You need the public outreach, that's the seventh house, and Jupiter expands it there. Popularity comes to you, become well known, or you find a good marketing strategy, especially if you're in businesses that are marketing, working with clients, sales. Uh, which is all seven house things or counseling of any sorts or negotiation contracts, deal making. Pff, you're going to have an amazing year. 
uh, next 12 months with Jupiter in your seventh house. Things will grow there. You can sign up very good contracts, have more sales, have more audience or whatever you want to call it or clients. I've seen businesses grow overnight with Jupiter in the seventh house. Business partnerships can be very beneficial for you or finding love. Again, remember there is interesting in Mars, in March, in May, Mars is born in your fifth house, which we talked about romance and falling in love, some new interest possibly, or renewal of your love life and your spark for life to have fun, to enjoy yourself, to be entertaining. While at the same time, towards the end of the month, Jupiter enters your seventh house for a year. And I'm not sure if from the beginning, maybe some of you towards the end of, you know, Jupiter stay in your seventh house will feel it maybe next May 2025. But there is truly an opportunity that a romance can turn into a committed relationship or creative project can turn into attracting a lot of uh, a creative project with a partner or creative project can attract a lot of clients for you. But uh, there is strong influence here for those who want relationships. First of all, the renewed passion and desire for romance to have fun of Mars in the fifth house. Second of all, the benevolent influence of Jupiter allowing you to meet a dharmic partner who is good for you, who expands you, who makes you feel good, who is like a teacher to you, who you are happy about. <laughs> um, so there you go. Open up yourself to others gradually from the end of May. Good things are starting to come to you from them. Uh, maybe relationships will improve. Uh, and growth of business and so on and by the way if you'd like to learn more about relationships since jupiter will be in your seventh house and for a lot of you that might be activation for meeting someone business partnership or marriage partnership committed relationship you can check out my course which is a short one just an hour 40 minutes or something like that about the specifics of each of the ascendant sun or moon sign how they can have very unique experiences in the first and second marriage that tend to repeat. For example, do you know that Sagittarians, their career can improve once they're in a relationship or their social status? And I'll explain you why. Uh, once they're in a committed relationship. And actually, that I, I speak about the first and the second marriages, how they differ <laughs> for Sagittarius rising or moon people, what they can expect. Uh, so it's some very unique and different information. It's just $9.99 for this knowledge that you won't find anywhere else. If you're interested, check it out in the description below.